Hi everyone, I hope you're well. I am good and uh, God has been gracious to me and I thank him for that. Today I want to share a, a message from uh, the book of 2 Kings, uh, chapter 6 from verse 24 going downwards, 17. It's actually some days ago I also shared a story from this. Uh, from this. And so I will touch a little bit of that. It is a story most of us are familiar with. There was a siege in Samaria. King Ben-Hadad had uh, laid siege. And the king of Israel, uh, with the people there, were suffering. Things were so thick and bad. And, and it was a difficult period. In fact, the, the, if you read the story, it says two women agreed to eat their children. So they started with one, and it became a problem. And so the king was called. And one woman was crying out, and the king says, if God can't help you, how do you expect me to help you? Nevertheless, let me hear your kiss. So he sat through to listen to the kiss. And then the king got so annoyed. He got so annoyed. He decided, in fact, he says these words, that if God does or deals with me ever so severely, if by today evening I have not separated the prophet's head from his body. Now, why is that? Because... I think this thing has come from God. Can you imagine? This guy is so annoyed with God, he decides to kill uh, a servant of God. I mean, is that not blackmail? As it's worst case, that he, because you're annoyed with God, you decide to settle it out to somebody. And I see this come very, very common. You're annoyed with God, you decide to settle scores with other people. But now, that's just one of the points. When this is happening, the message got to Elisha, the servant of God. Elisha, Give a word. He says, at such a time like this tomorrow, the economy will change. As bad as it has been, things will completely change. Now, there was a guy who was listening to the word of Elisha speaking. He said, this cannot happen. It cannot happen. Even if God was going to open the windows of heaven, that cannot happen. Can you imagine? This guy had already restricted God. First of all, his boss was annoyed with God and God has, not, has caused these things to happen. And now, this guy carries on the story. I think God cannot deliver this one. The servant of God looked at that man and said to him, by the way, it will happen. It is going to happen exactly as I have said, but you, because of what you have said, you will not even get near it. You will, not, you will see it with your eyes, but you will not partake of it. And so it happened you remember the story, there were four lepers, they went to the Aramean camps, and the army took off, and they found so much food. Now, the interesting thing here is, when this guy, as this guy was speaking and saying, even if God was to open the windows of heaven, on the while, God had caused the Arameans to come with a lot of food, clothes, gold, and all those things. They had come, they had laid siege, but they had come with food. So it did not take God the heavens to open to bring the food. It cost God just to scare off the Arameans and the situation changed. Let me tell you, the situation that looks so big and impossible that we cannot imagine, God has a solution that is next door. By the way, it will not take God to do such a humongous thing. He does not need to break the mountains, come up with water that is uh, it's forcing and stuff like that. No, it doesn't take God. God has a solution and most likely it is next door. And so God causes these Arameans to take off. And the guys who actually brought this news, one of the guys who are prominent, the other thing you need to know, that sometimes God will use the guys on the bottom of the barrel, the guys who are down there to bring good news. It is the people who are cast out, people who are not useful, in that community, people who are actually surviving by the benevolence of the people. They are the guys who went, found that the Arameans had taken off, and they brought back the good news. And the good news was, there was plenty. There was not only plenty of food, there was also plenty of clothes, there was plenty of jewelry, there was all things. In other words, the economy was changed from inflation to complete deflation, of unimaginable proportions. That's God. That's how God is able to do. And that's why he says in his word that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above 
what we think or even imagine or even ask. It is true. He is able to do that. So, you know, sometimes as we think of God in a linear way, we think God has to deliver it in this way. God is well able and he does it in a terrific way in his own style for his glorious name's sake. So we can trust this God. I pray that you will take time to read that portion of scripture in 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 24 downwards all the way to chapter 7 to the end. And I know it will bless you in a big way, big, big way. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, in very few moments, we have tried to do just an exposition of that word. And we are amazed at who you are. Such a God who provides. Goes beyond expectation. The things that we thought you were going to do, God, you go and you do it beyond. In fact, the channels we expect you to come through, you don't use those ones. You do others so that we come to understand that even the wisdom of the wise, oh God, the way your word says, you put it to shame. Lord, oh God, by just using simple things. That's the things that you do. You're an amazing God. I pray that now, God, as we interact with you and take in your word, we shall leave you the leeway to do whatever you want, however you want, your style. Because at the end of the day, it is to our own good. It's to our own benefit and for your glorious name's sake. Thank you and we give you praise for that meditation. Bless your people in this week and the days to come. These things we have prayed, believing and trusting in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and God's people say it. Amen. Bless you.